Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So in this session, we will see how sustainable development as a concept, it has evolved over a period of time. So the idea of sustainable development came after industrial revolution. And why industrial revolution? Because the economic and industrial activity that started after our industrial revolution only, after the beginning of the industrial revolution. And the negative part of this is that this economic and industrial activity because of industrial revolution has a significant impact of environment and social balance. And that led to ecology, economic and social crisis. So there are many crises, few of them they are just listed here, the economic crisis and also few of them are the ecological crisis. And the biggest crisis what came after this industrial revolution over a period of time or over years, what we are encountering now that is global warming, air pollution, ozone layer, loss of biodiversity, glacier melting and so on. So this evolution of the sustainable development what we are going to see this has taken from a beautiful blog written in U matter in world which gives the definition of the sustainable development sustainability and also given a nice um, uh, nicely presented that how the sustainable development is evolved over a period of time. Now as we know this idea of sustainable development started in industrial revolution which leads to also many crises because the economic and industrial activities led a significant impact on the environment and social balance. Now going further in 1968 uh, Garrett Hardin he gave the um, um, he brought out this tragedy of commons and how it is linked to the sustainable development. Now what is this tragedy of commons? If he argued that if individual acts independently, rationally and focused on pursuing their individual interest they would end up going against the common interest of their community and adjust the planet natural resources. It given a beautiful example that when everyone sees goes to uh, go for grass to a common land at the end of it since there is no control over it you will not find any more grass available in that piece of the land. And what is the solution? So this typically known as the tragedy of commons because no one is responsible for that particular common resources and everyone use up those resources according to their need. Now what the suggestion over here from Hardin is that mankind need to radically change its way of using common resources to avoid disaster in the future. This would be the way to keep on a sustainable development track. Then came the limit to growth and sustainable development by Meadow et al and this is commissioned by club of Rome. Now what they did, they did a simulation, they did a computer simulation to predict the consequence of what could happen in a planet with limited resources. And they did the analysis through, uh, through the interaction between 5 different dimension. And what are those dimensions that is world population growth, industrialization, pollution generation, food production non-renewable resource depletion. And in the interaction, uh, taking the analysis for the interaction between these 5 different dimensions, what they, uh, the ending scenario for it is that there is, a, there is going to be a collapse of economic and social that would happen by the end of 21st century if man imposes no limits to growth. And that is why this is known as the limits to growth and what assumptions they have taken? The assumptions they have taken is that whatever the dimension they are taking, what the uh, intersection, interaction between different um, uh, variables, the growth of variables were analyzed exponentially 
and technology ability to increase resource was linear. And what they did taking all these five different dimension, they created a computer simulation and that led to the ending scenario and the ending scenario says that it is going to be economic and social collapse. And after all these uh, years or after more than four decades, this prediction what they did through the computer simulation that seems to be right when it comes to pollution consequences, emission, the uh, so called man-made disaster and all these are threatening the sustainable development. Now, in 19, after that in 1972, the first UN conference on environment and sustainable development took place. This was the first historical conference uh, happen, took place in Stockholm and the discussion was on what is the human impact on the environment and how it is related to the economic development. And this is the first kind of conference among the world leader and the main goal of this conference was to the common outlook, common principle to inspire and guide the world's population to preserve a human environment. So, possibly we can say that historically this is the first time the global effort was made that what we should do about the human impact on the environment and how we should, how we should preserve the environment whatever is available to us. Then um, uh, in 1980, the HDI came into picture. Now, what is this HDI? This is Human Development Index and it is a integrated solution started to develop. Now, this solution is for what? To measure the country's economic and social achievement. So, Human Development Index it is a statistical tool that measures the country's economic and social achievement. And the dimension based on what typically they do this um, achievement, the rating of this achievement is through health, education, financial flow, mobility and human security among the others. And UN development program every year they provide a ranking based on this HTI report for the country. Then the ecological footprint was the new concept that was added and what is ecological footprint? This is the maximum limit of consumption per person according to the earth ecological capacity. And if we are living below, it would not compromise the future generation because we are not crossing the limit of the ecological capacity and why it is needed as the planet would be able to regenerate itself and less is always better for the path of the sustainable future. So, what is less? The ecological footprint should be less. Then in 1987, the definition of the most uh, recognized widely accepted definition of the sustainable development came. That is through the Brotland report, what we discussed in the previous class also uh, through the our common future. Now, how they have uh, identified, how they have defined the sustainable development? The human ability to ensure that the current development meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. Now, once the definition was given by uh, Brotland Commission, the World Commission on Environment and uh, Development, they also brought the challenges associated with the sustainable development. Now, what it is? The present state of technology and social organization on environmental resources together with limited ability of biosphere to absorb the effect of human activity imposes a limitation on the sustainable development. So, simply what it say that what imposes the limitation on the sustainable development. So, mostly it is about that what is the state of technology we are using? what is the role of the social organization and also what is the ability of the biosphere to absorb the effect of human activity that impose the limitation on the sustainable development. Now, the climate change came in 1988 with the formation of IPCC, International Panel on Climate Change through UN Development Program and World Meteorological Organization. Now, what is the role or objective of this IPCC? 
to develop and share knowledge about the impact of human activities on climate change. It also aim to explore the causes, consequences and the ways of light fighting the climate change. And then in 1994, we got the concept of triple bottom line or TBL. And this is the important assumption for the foundation of the sustainable development first time used by John Ellington, the foundation of the founder of a sustainability consultancy firm. And what are this triple bottom line? The three bottom lines in the businesses, one the profit and loss account, second how socially responsible the operation across the value chain, measure the environmental impact of the planet. These are the three bottom line of the businesses and it emphasizes the fact that business need to be concerned about its impact on people and planet, not only the finance and the profit. So, it is about people, planet and profit, it is not only profit. Then in 2001, we got the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment. Now, the goal of this millennium ecosystem assessment is to assess the consequence of ecosystem changes based on human well-being and the also to find the scientific basis for action needed to improve the conservation and sustainable use of the ecosystem. Now, how the assessment would be done for this? The assessment would be through change ecosystem resultant in substantial and largely the irreversible biodiversity loss harm the planet and society, degradation of the ecosystem services which is probably going to get worse, the changes needed to prevent the ecosystem degradation and need significant changes in the policy across both the public and private sector, then only the assessment would be proper and also the action associated with ecosystem, how we can restore the ecosystem, how can we can conserve the ecosystem that would be efficient. Now, when you are coming to the sustainable development today, there is a strong current framework on sustainable development. It has evolved over a period of time, we have added more dimensions to this and the latest IPCC report demonstrated that big change will need to happen quickly regarding the reduction of the CO2 emission because the way the CO2 emission growth is happening, we need the intervention in order to reduce the CO2 emission and to keep the earth's temperature change below 2 degree Celsius to prevent the devastic impact like the extreme one can be where we are going to lose few of the island, few of the low lying islands. Many actors across area, they are with the same goal. So, you will find that whether it is NGO, whether it is industry, whether it is uh, at the country level, organization level, all of them they are in the same goal to raise awareness on this topic and to create condition for it to grow and develop. And United Nations has a bigger role for it to create the awareness through different campaigns, organizing meeting between the world leaders and to understand what are the actions needed to achieve this or to control the negative impact. Then the role of World Business Council for Sustainable Development typically known as WBCST and what is their role? Their role is to helping the member countries to accelerate their business transition to create a sustainable world. And few of their activities or few of the uh, action what they do is that there is a provision of certification. And what is the provision of the certification? Mostly that is in the form of if someone is achieving something, they give a reward in the form of a stamp recognition that is the best practices what they are doing for the planet. So, the business is showing the best practices or businesses achieving something in term of the good for the planet, they get rewarded through the provision of certificates. And the typical example over here is the Rainforest Alliance or the Fair Trade Foundation or the Conscious Capital Movement. Next is what is the newest is that we talk about the circular economy. It is given by the MacArthur Foundation and they have evolved and given the concept of the circular economy. And what is circular economy? 
how society and business can align and how they use the natural resources the way the nature does it. So, aligning business operations across the supply chain is also allowing the different ecological business model to develop. So, what we have uh, tried to understand in that last few slides that how sustainable development has evolved over a period of time from the date to where the activity started during industrial revolution, after industrial revolution, what is the negative impact and till the time when, when we are talking about the circular economy or about the best practices what the businesses they do in order to achieve the sustainable development. So, in the next session we will try to see why sustainability is important or why sustainability is imperative or we will try to understand few of the issues associated with the fact that we need to give importance to the sustainability or the process of sustainable development. Thank you.